The US Army is working on a super gun that could hit targets around 1,000 miles or 1,600 kilometers away. The gun could be deployed in many locations but is likely being developed specifically to be placed in the South China Sea theater. Army Secretary Mark Esper told reporters in January, You can imagine a scenario where the Navy feels that it cannot get into the South China Sea because of Chinese naval vessels or whatever. Esper stated during a media roundtable, We can, from a fixed location, on an island or some other place, engage enemy targets, naval targets, at great distances, and maintain our standoff and yet open the door, if you will, for naval assets or marine assets. In this video, Defense Updates reports on U.S. Army's development of Supergun. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder's been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank or aircraft and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. China claims most of the South China Sea. It's said that it has indisputable sovereignty over the area. Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei and Taiwan have disputed these claims. The route is significant as about $5 trillion in trade through shipping passes each year. Countries like the US, Japan and India have no claims in the area and want freedom of navigation as per international maritime laws. China has tried imposing a unilateral decision as per which all ships and aircraft navigating in the area needs to identify itself to the Chinese Navy. Viewers may note that the Philippines approached International Tribunal for Arbitration and argued that Chinese activity in the region was violating international law. On July 12, 2016, judges at Hague Tribunal completely rejected China's claims over the waters and stated that China's claim that it enjoyed historical rights over the South China Sea is incorrect. In the last few years, China has been adding lots of military features in islands. This includes the deployment of long-distance radars in multiple places in the artificial islands, added multiple aircraft hangars and landing strips, as well as has launched satellites Gaofen-3 to monitor the region. Not only this, China has deployed significant offensive power in these several islands in the region. This includes YJ-12 and HQ-9 missiles. YJ-12 is a sophisticated anti-ship missile that has a speed of around Mach 2 if launched from low altitude and up to Mach 3.2 if launched from high altitude. It has a maximum range of 235 miles or 380 kilometers depending on launch altitude and can be fired from far off. In the terminal phase, the missile can travel at a very low altitude of 15 meters, which makes it hard for the sensors to detect. The speed, range and ability to skim close to the sea surface make it one of the most deadly anti-ship missiles in the world. A saturation attack by YJ-12s will be hard to defend against even by sophisticated defenses of the US military. The HQ-9 is China's new generation medium to long range active radar homing surface to air missile. HQ-9 has dedicated fire control radar and has a range of 185 miles or 300 kilometers. The missile is equipped with a 395 pounds or 100 kilogram warhead, has a potential speed of Mach 4.2 and has a maximum range of 125 miles or 200 kilometers. The system could target aircraft, drones and cruise missiles potentially making it dangerous for the US Air Force to enter the airspace protected by it. The experiments with extended range artillery are part of the US Army's move to develop hypersonic weapons. 
US military initially decided not to weaponize hypersonic technology, but things have changed in recent times. Russia's claim that it has already fielded a scramjet engine based hypersonic missile named Kinzhal. China is thought to be pursuing hypersonic weapons as well. The new gun is expected to utilize hypersonic tech in some way, though details are kept secret. Army Secretary Mark Esper told reporters that the gun could be used to hit Chinese outposts in the South China Sea from a gun pit on land. Esper explained the U.S. military needs to outrange enemy guns. Esper said, You want to be outside the range that they can hit you. He explained, Why was the spear developed? Because the other guy had a sword. A spear gives you range. Why was the sling developed? Because the spear closed off the range of the sword. You want to always have standoff where you can strike without being struck back. That's what extended range cannon artillery gives us. Case in point, vis a vis the Russians. Secretary Mark Esper indicated the way the supergun could be used. As per him, the new weapon would open the door for the other services, blasting enemy defenses before they have a chance to open fire on U.S. Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps forces converging on the region. Esper was quoted in Task and Purpose, where he said that the supergun could sit in a gun pit on the edge of the South China Sea and blast targets as far as a thousand miles or 1600 kilometers away. According to the secretary, the gun could destroy Chinese warships and military targets across the South China Sea, as well as demolish air defense sites, radar installations, anti-ship missiles, and the air bases that are constructed in the region. The destruction of these Chinese assets will make the entry of American air, naval, and ground forces in the region much easier. Multiple superguns deployed in the Philippine archipelago on the eastern side of the South China Sea, for example, in islands of Palawan and Luzon, will have the strike envelope to hit Chinese military installations in both the Spratly and Paracel island chains, including air bases on Subi Reef and Fiery Cross Reef. Actually, from Palawan, the superguns could even target Henan Island, which is home to China's nuclear ballistic missile submarines and even a small portion of the mainland. It's important to note that one of the best places to station the supergun will be the Philippine archipelago, which will obviously need some sort of understanding with the Philippines. And recent development indicates that the Philippines could play ball. Just two days ago, the Philippines has fired off a diplomatic protest against China. This came after the country's national security adviser, Hermogenes Esperon Jr., revealed that 113 Chinese fishing vessels were spotted swarming Pagasa Island between July 24th and 25th. Pagasa, also known as Thitu, is the second largest natural landmass in the Spratly Archipelago in the South China Sea. It's been a bone of contention between China and the Philippines. Earlier in the year, on the 4th of April, events took a new turn in the dispute when President Duterte said, I'm trying to tell China, Pagasa is ours. So let us be friends, but do not touch Pagasa Island and the rest. Otherwise, things would be different. He insisted that this was not a warning, this was just a word of advice to my friends, because China is our friend. Mr. Duterte went on, I will not plead or beg, I am just telling you, lay off Pagasa, because I have soldiers there. If you touch it, that is another story. Then I will tell my soldiers, prepare for suicide missions. It remains to be seen how things pan out. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.